My heart feels as if it's on the verge of exploding with all of this anticipation. In a remarkably unforeseen development, SpaceX took a decisive step yesterday by installing the flight termination system explosives on Starship. This is the final step before launch and something SpaceX only does when a mission is about to happen. So is a real November 15th launch actually viable? Find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. On Thursday, four SpaceX workers were spotted leaving the bunker where the explosive charges are kept towards Ship 25 and Booster 9. A zoomed-in image highlights the 1.1D class label on the back indicating that these are indeed explosives. After reaching that conclusion, almost immediately a crew lift carried some of the team up to the FTS location on the Booster 9 and moved up to the upper stage. This is a closely look at pre-installation versus post-installation of the FTS on Starship. After the flight termination system on the IFT-1 failed to destroy the full stack, SpaceX upgraded the FTS on Booster 9 by adding another explosive charge to the methane tank just above the common dome. With this extra charge, SpaceX should be able to destroy the common dome and methane tank in such a way that mixes both the methane and liquid oxygen, which hopefully results in a larger explosion, thus destroying the entire booster. Flight termination systems usually consist of a computer wired to explosives within a part of the rocket that allows for the vehicle to be quickly dismantled without causing a huge blast or igniting the remaining fuel. These mechanisms exist in every rocket licensed to launch. Obviously, SpaceX won't be pulling any pins until just before restack near launch day, but it is still another good sign they are staging for next week. This makes sense as you don't place a bunch of explosives on a rocket when there are still months left of work. The only reason these would be installed is if SpaceX got some good news and knows it will at least be attempting a launch within a few days or so. However, we should not be too worried about an explosion on the launch pad before launching. In fact, they are very safe. The detonators are more sensitive, but they are not connected to the main charge except during the flight. You may recall that in every Falcon 9 launch, we can hear a call out FTS or flight termination system safed. This means the detonators were physically disconnected from the main explosive charges. After that, no matter what happens, there is almost no chance for the main charge to detonate even if there is a fire on board or a short circuit in the system. The detonators themselves are quite small, and if they go off, the system is designed to contain the effects. But back to the Starship launch schedule so far, there is no official public confirmation of a launch license at this stage. FAA spokesman Steve Colm said Thursday that the latest SpaceX announcement on X is not true. Chatter is always interesting, but in this case, not accurate, he said in an email. Environmental and safety concerns laid bare in Starship's first integration test flight on April 20th of this year have created a rough path to securing approval for a second. SpaceX completed the corrective actions and on October 31st, the FAA said it had completed its safety review of the license approval process. It evaluated SpaceX's safety organization, system safety processes, flight safety analysis, and quantitative risk criteria for launch, re-entry, and vehicle disposal, Colm said. Now, it awaits completion of the Fish and Wildlife Service's environmental review of Starship's environmental impacts. The FAA is consulting with the agency on an updated biological assessment under the Endangered Species Act, the FAA said. The Wildlife Service reinitiated its consultation on October 19th, and the agency has up to 135 days to issue an amended biological opinion, agency spokeswoman Aubrey Buzek said last month. But the Fish and Wildlife Service did not expect to take the full amount of time. The full period would take it to early March of 2024. In an email sent out on Wednesday, Buzek said the agency was still working on it. Over the past several weeks, the Wildlife Agency and Texas Parks and Wildlife Department have been working around Starbase cleaning up debris left behind after the April launch. Since April, SpaceX also installed a deluge system that sprays thousands of gallons of water across the bottom of the launch pad to dampen the noise, heat, and force of the Super Heavy Booster's big Raptor engines. State and federal environmental officials were reviewing the impacts of 
called the deluge system that sends tons of water that's been exposed to heat, chemicals, and contaminants into sensitive wetland habitats that are home to endangered species. Within the next 48 hours or so, we can expect to hear more information from either SpaceX or the FAA on possible approval and a launch date. If they have been approved for launch, then a week from now, on November 15th, could be the attempt. Following the Starship timeline, Japanese billionaire Yusaku Meizawa announced on Thursday that his Dear Moon mission, originally scheduled for 2023, will take a little longer. Dear Moon was supposed to launch into space in 2023, but in a post on X, formerly Twitter, Meizawa said it seems like it will take a little longer. We're not sure when the flight will be, but we will give you all an update once we know more, he added. The move is related to the myriad delays to a second test launch of Elon Musk's Starship, SpaceX's experimental rocket that, if it proves viable, will be the most powerful rocket ever built. While NASA has granted SpaceX billions of dollars to develop the Starship as part of its Artemis program, which will return American astronauts to the moon for the first time since the 1970s, its first launch ended in failure after the rocket exploded, raining debris down and severely damaging the launch pad. It hasn't been cleared for a second test flight by the Federal Aviation Administration yet, although there are rumors that it could attempt a second test flight in mid-November. Meizawa's concession comes six years after Dear Moon was first conceived as a commercial flight for him and a friend to fly past the moon inside a SpaceX capsule, the Dragon 2. The mission was originally meant to launch aboard one of the company's Falcon Heavy rockets, but in 2018, Meizawa and SpaceX made an ambitious leap. They agreed that Dear Moon would launch using the company's planned Star ship vessel, and Meizawa said he would select eight other people to join him on the trip. That crew was announced in December of 2022 that included DJ Steve Aoki, as well as filmmakers, actors, and photographers. And for our last bit of news today, after the delay, SpaceX launched a cargo dragon mission to the International Space Station on the 9th of this month from one Florida pad as it completes work on a neighboring pad to support crew and cargo missions. A Falcon 9 lifted off from Launch Complex 39A at 8.28 p.m. Eastern and placed a Cargo Dragon spacecraft into orbit on the CRS-29 mission. The Dragon is scheduled to dock autonomously with the ISS at about 5.20 a.m. Eastern on November 11th. It'll remain at the station until early to mid-December. The launch was originally scheduled for November 5th, but was delayed to replace a Draco thruster on the spacecraft that had a valve-leaking nitrogen tetroxide propellant, said Benji Reed, Senior Director of Human Spaceflight Programs at SpaceX, at a pre-launch briefing on November 8th. After the thruster was replaced, technicians detected traces of nitrogen tetroxide in the area, but decreased once the system was fully pressurized. The Dragon is carrying 2,950 kilograms of cargo. The launch, like other launches of the current version of Dragon carrying crew and cargo, took place from LC-39A. SpaceX, though, is completing a tower at nearby Space Launch Complex 40 that is designed to allow its use for Dragon missions. Workers recently installed the crew access arm, one of the last major components for the tower. We are creating creating that capability off the Pad 40 to be able to fly Dragons, cargo, or human spaceflight missions," Reed said. He noted that being able to have SLC-40 support Dragon launches would serve as a relief valve for a heavy manifest of missions using LC-39A, which is also used for Falcon Heavy launches. Sometimes it's better for our manifest and our customers' needs to be able to have another place to fly Dragon. Having a Dragon capability at SLC-40 also ensures that Dragon missions can continue to launch if LC-39A becomes unavailable for an extended period for whatever reason. Besides hosting Falcon 9 and heavy launches, SpaceX is building a Starship launch pad at LC-39A. The tower may be first used for the AX-3 private astronaut mission to the ISS scheduled to launch in early January. Launching AX-3 from SLC-40 would allow LC-39A to be used for the IM-1 lunar lander mission launching as soon as January 12th, which must launch from that pad because it is set up to fuel the lander just before launch. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you'd like to support our channel even further, you can go ahead and hop on over to our Patreon, sign up to become a patron today through that link in the description below, and you'll gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? Well, in any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.